Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Virgil Warrior here. Hope you guys are having a super awesome day. Happy Wednesday. So we are at the middle of the week. Uh, two more days and your, the weekend will be here. So uh, let us continue our study on the ministry of the home. And it's coming from the ministry of healing. And it's the same person, with same lady with a third grade education that wrote this one. <clears throat> And then this is the great controversy. If you guys need a copy of this, I believe every family should have this particular book. But this book here, it takes you from the event that happened in heaven uh, all the way to the final events that's going to be taking place on earth. Okay, the great controversy. This is one of the, the major, major books that we should be reading today. Okay, and not only reading it, but we should uh, implement um the process within our family, okay, and in our personal lives as well. Okay, so let us continue. So um, today is part three, okay, I'm taking it into uh, increments, small increment, um, as I continue to, my body continue to heal. So, um, so the ministry of the home, uh, we first talk about the restoration and the uplifting of humanity begins in the home, right? And the work of the parents underline every other. And it says society is composed of family and it's what the head of the family makes it. Out of the heart are the issues of life. Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4, 23, okay? So may we bow our heads for prayer as we go into today's lesson. The kind of gracious hand of Father, I ask you to be with me as we uh, continue studying the ministry of the home, part three. Be with my sisters and brother. Open their mind that we'll be able to receive your message from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so it goes on to say here, it says, The multitude long for a better life, but they lack courage and rest a resolution to break away from the power of habits. They shrink from the effort and struggles and the sacrifice demanded and their life are wrecked and ruined. Thus even men of the brightest mind, men of high aspiration and noble powers, otherwise fitted by nature and education to fill position of trust and responsibility are degraded and lost for this life and for the life to come. For those who do reform, how bitter the struggle is to regain their manhood and all their life long is a, is a shatter constitution, a wavering will imparted into intellect and weaken soul power. Many reap the harvest of the evil sowing. How much more might be accomplished if the evil were dealt at with at the beginning? Let me repeat that. How much more might be accomplished if the evil were dealt with at the beginning? So as we as parents I know I've got some, I've got grown children. I got four grown children, three boys. And out of my three boys, I've got four, four, 14 grandkids. And uh, as you, uh, and then I have a uh, 21 and a 16. And you can see different um, traits, characters uh, that they have developed. And I mean, I, and I just, you know, I just still falling on my knees and ask and, and asking the Lord to deliver them because I, now you can see as you continue reading and study God's word, you can see clearly things that, that as a parent, as a mother, we should have dealt with from the beginning. Okay. And now as the child grown, it's like, it's a habit it's embedded in them. And it's only if they surrender their life to God that there will be will that they that they that God can uh, allow give them the strength and the energy to to forsake or to um, to remove that that habit and 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 give it uh, give them something else right. So that's I mean you two marry right I, I believe Connie 
uh, mammy valve, you guys could look at your children and see that different trait that we, sh as parents, right, that we should have dealt with. But maybe because we were so busy, uh, busy, busy, and uh, maybe we talk with them, right, but not really uh, fall on our knees and agonize with God and uh, fast and pray for that child, for that one habit that you know would have, you know, will take them to ruin if they do not submit themselves to God. So this is what this this is this is what this is saying. If we had dealt with it from the beginning, you know, as kids, two year old parents say, "Oh, they're so cute," not realizing that cuteness at two year old will become a disaster at fourteen, right, fifteen, right. So, I mean, so I'm still falling on my knees and, and praying and uh, agonizing with God for my grown children, my grandkids. Because you see, it's like it goes like from a generation to a generation until we as parents, even though the, we see grown kids, we still need to bring it back to their uh, attention. And then uh, for myself, I'm still asking and going to them and said, you know what, I am sorry for not putting um, more energy in, in, in helping you in this particular area. You know, we have to do that as parents because we are human beings. And sometimes I know uh, we were busy at that time. Maybe we have more time because we studied the word of God and we know what he says for us to do so we can see it now. And we can still know it's still not late. It's still not late. Yes, we confessed our sins that for what we have done, but unless that child go and ask God to remove it and to give him the strength to go through it right because i mean we're all still growing we it's all character building right because that's the only thing we'll be able to take to heaven is our character so it goes on to say let me grab some water here let me grab some water it goes on to say says this work rests in the great degree with parents Ooh, help me help me jesus it says this work rests in a great degree with parents in the effort put forth to stay the progress as uh, of intemperance and other evil that are eating like a cancer in the social body if more attention were given to the teaching parents how to form the habits and the character of their children a hundredfold more good would result have mercy, help me, Lord. Habits, which is so terrible, a force for evil. If it's in their power to make a force for good, they have to do with the stream at the source. It says they have to do with the stream at its source. And it rests with them to direct it rightly. Because as we as parents, there's nothing that we can do now since the child is grown, right? But they there uh, themselves has to go and seek God for, for guidance and for him to remove whatever that is, right? So parents may, may lay for their children the foundation for a healthy, happy life. They may send them forth from their homes with moral, and it says, um, with, let me see. Let me go here. They may send them forth from their home with moral and stigma to resist temptation and courage and strength to wrestle successfully with life's problem. They may inspire in them the purpose and develop the power to make their life an honor to God and a blessing to the world. They may they may make straight path for their feet and through sunshine and shadow to the glorious height above. Okay, we're going to stop there. But I have something else for you. Hold on. So the same woman wrote this other book too here. And it says Adventist Home. I got a, a part in here. And this, this chapter talks about, this one talks about, let's see. I had it marked. I think I think I just moved it. Hold on. Okay. I had it marked with my book and since I moved it, so now I don't know where it is. If I can't find it, I'll do it. To okay, here it is. 
Heaven's Estimate of Children, and this is chapter 48, and it's page 279 in the Adventist home. It goes on to say, children are the purchase of Christ's blood. What did I say? Children are the purchase of Christ's blood. Christ placed such a high esteem upon your children that he gave his life for them. Treat them as the purchase of his blood. Patiently and firmly train them for him. Discipline with love and forbearance. As you do this, they will become a crown of rejoicing to you and with a shine a light in the world. The youngest child that love and fear God is greater in his sight than the most talented and learned man who neglect the great salvation. The youth who, con who consecrate their hearts and lives to God have, in so doing, placed themselves in connection with the fountain of all wisdom and excellence. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? And it goes on, it says, Of such is the kingdom of heaven. The soul of the little child that believe in Christ is as precious in his sight as are the angels above the throne. There are to be brought to Christ and trained for Christ. There are to be uh, guided in the path of obedience, not indulgent in appetite of vanity. My goodness, can we imagine that? And it says, if we but learn the wonderful lesson which Jesus sought to teach his disciples, from a little child, how many things that now seem insur insurmountable difficulties would rarely disappear. When the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as a little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever therefore shall humble himself as the little child, the same is great in the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that powerful? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was just going through that as I was preparing for my message today. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? So we, so we go back to say, what time is it? It's time for us to get ready. It's time for us to be ready. If you look at it, guys, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. We know that if you look at Revelation 17, no, actually, Revelation 7, verse 1, it talks about the four, the four angels that, is, that has the four, that's holding back uh, the winds of strife. Okay, there's four angels that's holding back. So people say it is bad. No, it's not bad yet. Okay, it's going to be bad. Because if you think about it, when God had it has enough, when he has sealed his people, okay, whether people, it would be decided to go with God day, and that's the seventh day, the Sabbath, the fourth commandment, or we go with man uh, the first day of the week, you receive the mark of the beast. So you got the seal of God or the mark of the beast, right? Sunday worship is the mark of the beast. And when he, when you have made uh, the clear distinction that you're going to serve God, then you get the seal. If you decided not to be that rebellious group uh, and go along with the dragon, the beast, and I said the beast, it's, it's the Church of Rome, uh, the Pope is the Antichrist, and you got the false prophet that's aligning them all, aligning themselves under one banner, okay, to enforce the Sunday law, the common good, that's the, the name that they call it, the common good. When you think about all that stuff that's going on, and when things, God already sealed his people, and everybody has made a decision in their mind which day they decided to worship, whether they're going to serve God or serve uh, man, then you'll be placed with the mark of the beast or the seal of God. When that happened, then you'll have the, those four angels will release will stop holding the winds from coming onto the earth. And then you will have all the plagues, seven plagues, and all this other stuff. So it's a serious time that we are living in. We might see everything might be glorious right now, 
And in coming a time that we won't be able to read our Bibles, you won't be able to hear these type of messages because people like myself, they are trying to um, to take off the ear so we cannot tell you guys what's really going on. And um, like I said, so you guys need to get this book if you want a copy. Uh, I've got a uh, file copy that you can have it. Uh, it's free. And so we need to be prayerful, study up. Uh, fast and pray like we've never have. We got grown children. We need to be praying for them that they themselves will see the time that we're living in and get their self together and, and fall on their knees, uh, confess their sin and uh, and leave their sins at the at the feet of Jesus and turn from the wickedness and and turn to God, return to God. That's just what this whole battle is about. God's been chasing his people from the, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. OK, and some people think that God is is a God of love. He's a God of love. He's also a God of judgment. OK, he's going to be judging his people right now. God is in the most holy place interceding on our behalf. OK, so once he moved from that as the high priest right now, once he moved from that and it says it is finished, then that that's it. for Then everybody's been sealed. But right now. We are not sealed because some people are not are not ready. They have not heard the message, okay? They have not heard the message. So continue to pray for your family. Fast for them. Like I said, we got grown children. We got grandchildren. Fast and pray like we have never. And the mothers that have the babies, start praying over your babies. Start praying for them and teach them the word of God. They're not too young to understand because... If you got four or five year old, they need to know because they still have to make a decision as well. Five year old, hello. They we all we all need to make a decision. We're either going to serve God or we're going to serve Satan. There's only two choices, my sister, my brother. And so let me leave you with this. It says, Lord bless our home. Let me drink some more water. It says, Lord, bless our home with peace and love and laughter, with understanding and with loyalty. May we together follow Christ the master and know the blessing of his sovereignty. May every heart receive his loving spirit and know the truth that makes life truly free. Then in the spirit, May we live united and find in God our deep security. Forgive the hurt our selfishness inflicted on those we love and those who love us best. Christ heal the scar and draw us all together in, in him whom Will is peace and joy and rest. And the last verse goes, Father, in gratitude for our homes and loved ones, we open now our hearts to all mankind. Grant us your spirit, love for one another, so in your peace we may be concord find. Isn't that one? Isn't that a good one? So we're going to close with that. The kind of gracious center, Father, I thank you, Father, that you have uh, brought my sister, my brothers here, Father, and, uh, and all the uh, individuals that will be listening in the future. Continue to bless them, Father, and give them a desire to want to search thee with all their heart, Father, and that they will leave their sins uh, at the foot of the cross, Father, and return and serve thee with their full heart. Continue to bless us today. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen, amen. So my sister, my brother, go with God and continue to study. Study like you have never studied before. Prayer and fasting like you have never. For your family members so that they could wake up. Pick up the phone and ask them. Tell them. I mean, I do that. Are you studying your Bible? You know, you know, you know what time it is. And, you know, you got the books. Read the books, you know. So I'm just reminding my kids, my kids. So the same thing I'm reminding my sister, my brother, because we all have to be sealed. There can be no sin found in any of us when Jesus returns because he's coming back for a people that has his character. So it should be no sin. Right now he is in the most holy, holy place interceding as a high priest on our behalf. When he, when he moved away, 
everything will be done, right? So we have to be sealed. So there, there's some people say people will be sinning. No, no. God's children will be sealed. So that means to say they will have a perfect character. Perfection. Holiness is what Jesus is looking for when he come back for our people that love him. And because we love him, that's why we keep his commandment. Because we love him, that's why we change our diet. That's why we change the way we dress. That's why we change the languages that we use, uh, the words we use. That's why we don't do certain things. Because... It's not of him. Hope that makes sense. It's not of him. So go, my sister, my brother, and have an awesome day. Take care. Until tomorrow, we go with um, part four tomorrow. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.